Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another prop wash video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the windings that exist within a brushless motor. Now we're going to be covering three main topics. The first one is going to be primarily a consisting of the turn count within a brushless motor and how to find what is the best turn count for your application. The second item that we're going to be covering is our slotted versus our slotless motor. And the third item, the last item that we're going to be covering is the delta wind versus the Y wind. So let's get started. So when we're talking about the turn count that exists within a brushless motor, we're also talking about the windings that exist within a brushless motor. This is all of the copper that is placed into the motor that forms the stator within the brushless motor. Now windings are placed so that they interact with the magnet in order to create the magnetic force that allows our motor to rotate. So let's talk about the windings themselves. So when we talk about the windings, the general thing to talk about is the turn counts that exist within the brushless motors. And turn counts can consist anywhere from about one turn uh, upwards of many tens of turns. They can also be stepped by the half a turn. So you, it's possible to actually have a 1.5 turn motor or a 7.5 turn motor, for example. And generally speaking, as turns increase within a brushless motor, what you're gonna find is that the KV decreases in that brushless motor. When the KV is decreasing, you can also expect the amount of current that that motor that it would draw when all else is equal to be less. And on the other hand, if the amount of turn count is actually decreasing, so you go from let's say a two turn motor to a one turn motor, you would expect that the KV of that brushless motor increases. With a higher KV, you would also expect that the current capability of that motor is also going to increase. It will also draw more current at the same load because you're trying to push that load at a faster speed. And this kind of ties into how you can select the best turn count for your application. We're not really caring about the the turns that exist in a brushless motor unless we race for a specific class that says you need to use such and such turn motors. That was common in the car area of things. Um, it may not be as common anymore. However, what we're really caring about when we select our brushless motor is the KV value. And we'll get into this a little bit more. However, if you do have a four turn motor, for example, and you compare that against another four turn motor, you can actually have a different KV in both of those counts, even as everything else is equal, except the winding termination. And we'll talk about that near the end of the video on how that's different, but this is an example of why we care about the KV. When we select the application, the KV value is going to be selected based off of the other parameters around your build. That's the super important thing to follow. You don't care about the amount of turns that exist within the motor, as long as that KV value is gonna be best suited for your application. So this also comes from a question that was asked of me many, many months ago, where someone ended up saying, I bought a one turn motor, however, I look within it and it looks like it's got a million turns inside of it. Well, that turn that the motor manufacturer has placed into the motor is not just of one wire strand. You don't have one massive piece of wire going around and forming that one turn. What you actually have is a multi-strand wire that's used that forms that one turn. And there's a couple big reasons why a motor manufacturer would do it. One is the electrical parameters and stuff that is related there. We won't get into that. Uh, the other primary reason why you'd wanna do that is it's a lot more efficient and effective to use smaller wire to form the turn count, even if it's one turn or even if it's 10 turns, it doesn't matter, to use smaller wire to form your turns. As you can imagine, if you have big turns of wire, and you did this everywhere, you'd have these big holes that you would have to fill. If you break that big wire into many small wires, for example, going from one strand to 20 strands, you can now get a nice compact wiring configuration to be squeezed into that the area where the windings exist in a brushless motor in order to occupy and consume all those voids. So now let's talk about a slotted motor versus a slotless motor. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer one over the other. So a slotted motor is a motor that consists of iron laminations that are placed face to face. They're stacked upon each other in order to form the core of the stator. You then take windings and you run the windings around those laminations. 
A slotless motor does not have these iron laminations inside of it. What it has is nothing. You actually just take the windings, you create your windings in a whole entire configuration, and you take that whole entire winding configuration, you slide into the motor. So there's many advantages that come out from one versus another. One of the key advantages of a slotted motor is that it creates a stronger magnetic force resulting in a higher amount of torque for us. So the magnetic force that is created is going to be stronger in that slotted motor because the iron is actually holding its own magnetic force. Uh, there's certain stuff that's within it that ends up aligning to the magnetic field that's generated in the copper windings and that's what beefs up your magnetic field. A second advantage of the slotted motor is that you get a lower KV out of that motor. A third advantage of a slotted motor is the windings do not need to be self-supporting. Uh, they have the laminations that you wind them around, so the windings themselves do not need to be self-supporting. You don't have to epoxy them or anything like that. The fourth advantage of a slotted motor is that they are relatively inexpensive to create. You create your laminations and then you wind the windings around them. Uh, there's not much more than that. Now there are a few advantages to the slotless motor. One of those advantages is that you do not have the cogging torque that is caused when a magnetic pole lines up with the laminations. You don't have laminations in a slotless motor so you eliminate that cogging torque. Um, you, if you have a brushless motor and you actually spin the shaft, you could feel that on a slotted motor. On a slotless motor, it's a lot more smooth. You don't feel that when you rotate the shaft. The second advantage to a slotless motor is that you have good low speed sensorless operation. Now this might not be that significant for brushless motors for us. We're generally operating at a higher speed where we already have our vehicles in motion and if you fly an airplane or ducted fan, you don't even care about this at all. Uh, the last advantage that a slotless motor has is you have reduced core losses at high speed operation. Uh, this is primarily a comparison against the slotted motor, of course, where the slotted motor you have iron losses that are created in the iron laminations. You avoid this in the sensorless motor. So those are the differences between the slotless motor and the slotted motor. The last item that I wanted to cover today is the difference between a Y wind and a delta wind. So if you imagine the Y wind, here's a photo and image of it. The Y wind is essentially where it takes one leg, you know, and you have your three phases and in the middle all of those legs end up meeting. So as you can imagine, if you pick any two connectors on a brushless motor, there's always going to be two windings that exist between those motors. So you can imagine you have, you know, twice the resistance of one phase. If you take a delta configuration, you essentially have a triangle shaped configuration where you have only one phase of motor windings in between those two uh, locations, in between those two motor connectors. The biggest difference between the delta wind versus the Y wind is that the delta wind is going to be about 1.7 times the KV of the Y wind. The exact value following the law of cosines gets you to a value of root of 3. That's the exact value, the exact multiplier in theory. You would also expect that the current draw of a delta motor to be higher by that same sort of value because the KV is higher. That is the main difference between the Y wind for the versus the delta wind. It kind of goes the same sort of idea that we talked about earlier. When you're selecting your motor, you want to select the motor based on the KV that you need. Um, I have noticed in my own personal experiences some differences between the delta and the Y wind. I have noticed when I use a very hot wind, so that is a one turn of the delta configuration or similar, that it's very difficult for my electronic speed controls that I used at the time to actually dial in the timing. If I tried to increase the timing of the speed control when it's operating with the brushless motor, I didn't get the best results. Yes, I got a little bit more speed out of it, but I got also a lot more heat and I didn't like that. So I ended up taking the timing, I pulled all the timing back out of it. And the Y wound motors that I ended up using, they accepted the timing differences or, or changes a little bit better. And that worked better for me. Now there's a lot of people who are running delta wound motors in their race, you know, car or boat or airplane or whatever it may be that are experiencing very good results. The last point that I want to make about the winding 
uh, terminations is the location of where they actually is, exist. So this is important because you don't want to end up shortening your motor leads. You know, if your motor leads you feel are too long and you ended up cutting them back a little bit, you don't want to actually remove the termination. So it's important to note that some motors actually have their motor winding terminations outside of the can. When they have them outside of the can, I'm talking about the three wires that come out. The termination point is right there. You do not want to cut back <clears throat> those leads on the motor because if you do, you can actually permanently damage your motor where you don't have the terminations anymore lining up. Uh, there are some motors, such as the Castle Creations motors, uh, that do not have that happen within them. They have a very long lead that's associated with them, and their termination points are actually inside of the motor. So that motor, you can actually cut back the leads if you feel they are too long. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in that next video.